again. Fine, fine. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us and and uh, having some patience with the technical parts of this this uh, program. Don't worry. So, um, first of all, ciao. And listen, I'm I'm really excited about this talk because, you know, uh, generally when people uh, talk about graffiti and graffiti history, they point to Italy, uh, but yeah. not in terms of contemporary graffiti. Uh, they discuss it in, from the point of antiquity. Um, and, yeah. and, uh, and so it's interesting in this conversation, I want to explore that with you in terms of how um, a culture views itself in relationship to that antiquity and whether that mattered or not in, this, in the story and the history of, of graffiti. Uh, um, and so what I'd like to do is kind of... Um, I guess just start in the beginning with your story, right? Um, and how how you you uh, got into graffiti and um, what it what it um, you know what inspired you to uh, create this book, uh, Roma Subway Art. Well, uh, thanks of all. Th thanks first of all. Thanks for inviting me. The thing it's uh, just uh, four years ago, I asked a friend, Lorenzo, to just to, um, to scan my pictures because uh, back in the day I used to do macaroni, that it's an uh, old school magazine that was make, made in 95, 96, the first number. And so I get, I have um, like, 20, 30,000 pictures of uh, graffiti, more or less. And a lot are mine, of course. And I asked him just to scan my, my photos. And after one week, he just called me back and he said, man, you should do something with this picture, you know? You cannot just hide in your uh, box or put in a... somewhere. And I say, but that's huge you know i i was not into doing a book by myself and they tell him listen if you want i do one part i do the first part and you you work on the last part because he was more active in the last years you know and so that's what we did and uh, well after a while i start a war tour so I came back just a few years ago, and we finished it, and uh, that's, that's what's happened, and that's how we get this book. And so when we think about um, graffiti, the, the, the subway movement in graffiti, I think we, we discussed this earlier, there's something very different between the subway movement and the train movement in Italy. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, I mean, just uh, the subway, it's not uh, in many systems. There are like uh, five now, maybe six cities that have a subway system. And uh, Rome, of course, uh, get one of, of these. And it's a little bit harder to paint a subway than a train, actually. You know, trains you can paint uh, all around and they are parked in the middle of nowhere. On the opposite side, uh, subway, uh, it's now getting quite hard. But of course, back in the day, was really, really easy, you know, to paint. And uh, so just people started to paint, and uh, that's how it is now. So you, know, you, but... started, you started painting in 1994, but graffiti has had a history going back um, like yeah. I said, in millennia, but contemporary graffiti first presented itself in, in Italy in 1979 when uh, Lee and Fab Five, um, Fab yeah, Five they Freddy, came, they went out there yeah. for the, uh, the, 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 the exhibition, Gallery, right? The Claudio Bruni exhibition. At, at, at yeah, Lisa. exactly. And so exactly. that had an impact, right? And 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 from your vantage, from what you've learned, what was the impact of that on on Rome? After well, well, as I told you, like it was this g young guy that uh, it's uh, Ice One, and this guy was just a kid, you know, at the time. And uh, the mother was a, um, 
uh, art uh, crit critician and uh, she bring him to this exhibition and they have seen this and they say, wow, that's awesome and I want to do, but he didn't know nothing about, you know. And so that's how, what he explained me like last year when we spoke, it was that uh, he was shocked about this, you know. And in the beginning, graffiti, the first graffiti in Rome were totally politics, you know. Just uh, people from left, uh, they used to do graffiti. So it was politics. And then slowly, when it starts to be this uh, subway adventure, they start to be people writing their names on, on trains. So that's how it starts. And how was society responding to that? How was the, how was the city responding to all these kids all of a sudden taking on this movement um, that was uh, in, in a crisis mode in New York City? Well, I think uh, that back in the day, it was quite normal to see graph, you know, there were graph all over, all the subway lines were painted, were totally painted. And uh, now there is really, a, there are a lot of graph also on the street. And I think that those the people doesn't really like. But for subway, most of the people I used to speak, they just say, yeah, but please don't paint the window, you know, because we can see outside, you know. That's what the what they used to say. Wow, that's that's some serious courtesy right there. So if yeah, you yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about, um, it, it, let's just, I want to focus a little bit on history because that way we can contextualize where we are. Who were some of the early pioneers of, of Roman graffiti? Well, on subway or you mean... Uh, well, of course, it started on the walls first, right? Yeah, it, it started on the walls. And uh, I'll tell you the truth. Eh? That's so big and it was so, so hard that I was not really into working on those parts because it's so much, you know? I mean, it's the, the mid-80, probably, when they start to, to paint walls. And uh, I wasn't study for this, but there were some like uh, Chromo, like, uh, you know, uh, Crash Kid and some, some others like Clown. They, they used to paint walls and then they move on, on trains, you know. So the first action was in 92 on the Lido line the first uh, Romans people, because the, the real first action was from a German guy. Do we know who that was? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was JBK from Kiel. And this guy actually just, uh, you know, we didn't knew just, uh, there were this trash train parked, you know, and you could see when you were going on the seaside and you, they were parked this train, uh, on, on a side, on a track side. And uh, every people that pass, wow, this is so old school, you know? And so I just investigate a little bit because I have some German friends. And then I arrived there and it was like, okay, I have this guy, it's from this city from Kiel and they have a friend, Razor, that is a well-known guy. And it was just one month before I had this news he was uh, painting, with, painting with me in Rome and I called him and he said, yeah, wait, I go to speak with him and just he passed me on the phone and the guy sent me the pictures and we, I did a little interview that is in the book. And so now in terms of, like, explain to us the book itself, right? You were inspired by subway art um, and... Yeah, and again, I mean, not really inspired on subway art. No? Because Subway Art have uh, no interviews, you know, mostly. Right, right. So, uh, the, um, just, the, what Inspire does, it's just that we want to show the Rome Subway history, you know, and so that's the, the title, yes, it's, in, it's 
it's like uh, I don't know how you say in English, but it's something that to remind the subway art. Yeah, but of course, it, we, we say that that it's an homage. Yeah, homage. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, fair okay. enough. But yeah, it was this. You know what we want to because you can find many names, but uh, the truth is that we speak about uh, subway art. Right. So that. So So and that's our, our art, you know? Yeah, Trota, it's interesting to me, right? How you, you as an international bomber and an observer and documenter sort yeah. of now play this role as a kind of a historian, right? Of your culture, of your country. Yeah, um, true. And, and, and tell me about that responsibility. Like, for instance, when you, you, you mentioned that you wanted Lorenzo to take the lead on the photos and stuff like that. Um, at, what yeah. point, at what point did you decide that this was going to be very serious for you, that, you know, documenting and speaking about Italian history would be important? Well, as I told you before, just I was uh, looking for a guy that uh, his name is Crash Kid that died some years ago. And uh, I, I didn't find any picture and I, I know i had these pictures back in the days, you know, it is one of these that stay on in these photos. And uh, actually what's happened is that I start to ask to some uh, old schooler than me and one guy uh, just give me all his black books, you know. And then I say, wow, I mean, I will never give someone I'm not... You know, I don't know him very well, all my black books. I mean, it's my life. I'm painting since almost 30 years, you know, and I was like, wow, that's so, so big, so important. I cannot do something just, you know, like that. I have to do something big. And so I talked to Lorenzo and I told him, hey, man, okay, let's do something real, you know, and let's just don't... Uh, make a little book, you know. But of course, when you start this thing, you can probably it's something that can be for for a lifetime, you know, because you 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 continue to discover things, you know, and uh, it's every day and some picture every day. Just people from New Zealand they send us picture from '94, you know, and some picture when when I've seen the picture, then I called the, the, the guys that did the, those graph back in the day on the subway and those guys, they say, no, man, I never saw this piece, you know? It, I mean, and it was shocking for me, you know, that people from New Zealand send us picture from, from Rome. It's amazing. As I look at this photograph, I, I think most people will look at this photograph and be reminded yeah. of Martha Cooper's pictures. Um, yeah, yeah. Can easily be New York. Um, yeah. Be, so let's 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 talk about influence, right? What was influencing um, the, the, the I guess the culture in, in Italy? You know, the what what was in terms of the media? What were you guys looking at? Were you guys looking at Style Wars? Were you influenced by that or any of the hip hop movement? Well, yeah, it's depend on everybody of us, you know, but uh, actually, yeah, the, the people, the, the first one, they used to, to, to see the, the US graph, you know, the New York graph, and, and I think also some German, because at that time in German, they were a big scene. But, uh, yeah, when it starts, you know, I mean, people that uh, come from France, from all over Europe, when they come to Rome, they used to say, yeah, that's New York, you know. I mean, when the book was out, there were some, you, you could read people that write about the book. And uh, the thing that make, made me really happy was about a French guy that say, yeah, Holland was, you know, Amsterdam was super famous, uh, Paris was super famous, Dortmund had a great, great scene, but uh, Rome is New York. By the way, you know, just do train, paint, paint the train for years and years and years. And still now, I mean, sometimes you have to cross, you know, 
I mean, yeah. there, are, there is one line here, the north line, it's totally bombed, and if you want to paint, you have to cross. It's, so, it's interesting, because it's, it's got a perfect infrastructure, like, uh, like New York, right? The subway system, the tunnels. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have some, some lines, they go outside, some, they just have one bridge, you know, and some, they are all underground. Now we have a new line with no driver, you know, as all the new new train system. But uh, yeah, just it's a uh, pretty amazing system, but it's just five lines, eh? it's not so much, you know? Yeah. It's not New York with uh, like uh, 20, 30 lines or Paris, I don't know. So the thing is that they never really give a fuck, you know? And uh, when in 2000, in 2000, it was this, uh, this thing from uh, the Vatican, you know? And uh, so the Rome city had a lot of money to clean all the subway. So they clean one line, but they didn't put anything seriously, you know, to remove graffiti. So just when they start to clean the second line, the people start to repaint all the line, the clean line. And so the trains continue to, to be painted and painted, you know? And so and I guess part of this is, is it, it's interesting because there was so much graffiti that it would inspire you to start the magazine. Yeah. And tell I us mean, to me, about to me, you, you know, started. sorry. Tell me a little bit why you decided to start the magazine. Well, Macaroni. Yeah, Macaroni was like uh, with the Dale, was one of my friends, one of my crewmates. And uh, just, you know, we were into, okay, let's do something new, you know, let's just have uh, something. And at that time, I mean, computer you couldn't find so so good ones, you know? And Dallas spent really a lot of money to, you know, to, to can make a magazine, you know, like that. And also printing, it was, I mean, the, the first one, it was impossible to have in color, you know? It was too, too fucking expensive to, to get. So yeah, for us, it was like amazing. And when it came out, you know, then it made us, the possibility to connect with people all around the world, you know, and that's what's happened. We just start to get picture and connection. So I start to travel all around Europe and uh, some they became friends, some they became brothers, you know, some others just you paint one time, but uh, he gave us really a lot of, uh, that's a job, eh? but also a lot of fun to, to just to see also the difference between, you know, beto between Roman style and outside style. So it was pretty nice to us to, yeah. to do this. Yeah, I'm glad you, you say that because I was going to ask you about regional styles, right? Like the impact of what you guys were doing in Rome on places like Firenze and Bologna and all these other cities. Yeah. Yeah, Milano, for example, you know, they get this uh, wild style, total wild style influenced by Phase 2 and those people that went in that time. And I mean, we had nobody, you know, we couldn't see um, pieces. So it was just the first one that get some magazine and they could see. And then it was also this thing that the people that when they start on trains, you know, just it was like, OK, but you should be quick. So the style can be e nice, but not so, not so wild style. We never had a real wild style story in Rome, you know? It's interesting because I'm, I'm noticing that in the photos about um, how sort of simple, a lot of simple styles, right? It's, it's not as, yeah. uh, it, it, not like, well, it is sort of like New York in some ways, but um, that the, the styles, like we could see if we go back, uh, they're not, it's it's kind of like what you say, you know, you get in and you get out really quick. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you see also, you know, just to let you understand, it's really like uh, New York. Eh? There, there was a point around uh, the end of the 90s, we get in the yard, you know, and we, we could stand four hours inside, you know. So it was really like, okay, let's do like four or five panel. But so, at that time, we never had to think, okay, let's do five hour panel, you know. It was impossible just to think to do one panel for painting for five hours. Right. And let me ask you something, because it's important to kind of understand how old you were. Um, like when you decided that you you were going to start the magazine, um, how old were you? Uh, I think I was uh, 18 at that time. And my friend 19. So we were pretty young. Yeah, I, I find that really interesting about um, the 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 motivation to do that and the empowerment, because that, again, makes you kind of a documentarian uh, by default. Yeah, of course. As, as I told you, you know, just I was also, I think, as, as it was for you back in the day, you know, just I was spending all my morning, you know, instead of going to, to school, I was just spending my, my day on subway, on subway track, you know, and looking for pieces and, and, and looking new piece and say, wow, and making up photos, you know, with first uh, cameras. And then when it became the magazine, oof, it was crazy because, you know, you have to make a lot of pictures to get one, a good one. So that was and, our... Best. And, and Trota, what did you do when the internet started to become a reality for uh, sharing pictures of trains and and stuff what, did you did you go online with the magazine no no never but my dale that at, at in a certain point we had uh, a beef he used to put uh, online the, yeah he had a website called the hello my name is and he used to put a lot, a lot of pictures. He continued to make pictures for years and doing this this uh, website. But no, I was more concentrated at that time to open my shop, you know, that, that is Graph Dream, that's still open. And uh, so I was more concentrated on, on this, you know. I never I never was thinking 10 years ago to, to even uh, made a book in my life, you know. Will you will you do a volume two? Sorry. Will you do a volume two, another version of it? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really our job, you know. Not not like that. I mean, this it's re it was really really hard, you know. Just I used to write to Lee that I don't know who is, you know, and uh, to to writing in hey. Have you ever painted the subway in Rome when you came in 79? Imagine, you know, it's like crazy attitude. I never will, will do this, you know, it took too long, man. I, I write to some people that they move in Australia and the people just going to check for their, uh, for their picture for three months and they say, man, I can find, you know, we moved to Australia from, from Rome and we, we don't found. So it's not uh, it's not so easy. Or another guy that live in Chile, and uh, just I get his mail and he answer me after one month. So imagine. Yeah. So it take it takes a long time, and so yes. now you're you, you you're, you're focusing on the on the shop. Tell us a little bit about um, what that means as a as a graffiti artist, uh, entrepreneur, to. Um, create a shop to support the movement? Well, as I told you, we never, when I opened the shop with Beat, that is my partner and brother, we never think about uh, to be rich, you know? But it was more to continue to be free, you know? To let, when you paint, you feel free, you know? And that's what we think not today, you know? Just okay, we get little money, just to can travel and to can do our passion and that's it 
And that's, you know, to me, just that's what I want to do. You know, I want to, con I would like to continue like that. So it's not really the good way to be entrepreneur, but uh, yeah, it's the way well, I want to live my life. You know, I would like to live my life at least. Then Trota, we can, we can reframe it and say that you're a social entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, I hope, I hope for real, what, what I hope is to, um, that people will get something from me, you know, that at one point, you know, uh, with my graph, but I know that with the graph I've seen, you know, after a few years you stop and you are for, you know, nobody remember about you. But with this book, I hope that people in 10 years or, or more, I don't know, they will, they could say like, wow, this guy have done the, you know, have done something good for our city and for our culture. That what, that's my goal. I don't know if I will reach it, but that's it. I mean, have you, what was the impact after the book the, 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 in terms of the, uh, the, the impact in the community? Did it inspire more graffiti? Did it inspire other writers to publish their own magazines and books? Well, yeah, people are working, I mean, like Lash or John, you know, they're working on books, on their own books. But to me, it was really to do the book, the Roman book, you know, and not my book or not the way I see the, the scene. It was just to be complete. So I... We have no more graffiti then, you know, it, there is this shit of COVID. When did we did the presentation, we, we had a nice place where, where we did it and we could uh, let in 40 people per hour. So we get 300 people. So imagine every hour, bam, 40 outside, 40 in and starting again. So we get some talk with uh, some uh, people that are interviewed in the book, but it was really, really hard, you know. And after that, we normally had a presentation in Bologna, one in Florence, one in Milan. Bam, they close everything and we couldn't do the presentations. That, but doesn't that show us that there is an interest and a demand for this understanding and appreciating this culture? Uh, yes, yes, but you know, like in Europe now, it's uh, a lot of people are just into street art, what they call street art, and so sometimes graffiti they are looked like really like bad things now. To me, just I try to do something colored, you know, and not on the window. But uh, that, that's it, that's, you know, it's what we can do, it's just to, to be free to do what we want, because by the way, there are a lot of kids and of course they have to start, you know. Sometimes some people, they come to my shop and they say, yeah, but look, look, look the text, they are shit. And they say, yeah, man, but this, you, you know, it's, that's what we do, you know. There is a nice graph, but there is also tags. So how does the graph how does the graph community um, relate to the street art community? Because sometimes graffiti artists turn street artists, but is there is there is is there conflict in that in in Rome or is it does it just exist, uh, you know, mutually in in Rome? Uh, it depends. Some writer they accept the artists, you know, and some they don't. So some they cross and some they, they don't. But the problem here is that the street artists, mostly, you know, they just, they get the walls from, uh, from the state and they feel free to just to cross the, the graph, you know, the old graph. And they didn't understand that maybe that was a piece of history, you know, for us. So right. that's, that's the, the problem. But uh, on the other way, I mean, for me, graph graffiti it's something ephemeral that today we do it and tomorrow it doesn't exist anymore you know right. i mean i remember 
I remember one time I was painting a train 20 years ago in Stockholm and you know just we painted totally drunken few hours later we went to make photos and the train was buffed you know so, so and in Rome in Rome in Rome you know I get some pieces running for 10 years so Are that's you serious 10 years yeah of course of course of course I mean now I mean now if you come today in Rome there are pieces from three, four years ago, huh? or, or more, maybe. Yeah. And, and so what are the, so given that, that you have so much graffiti and vandalism, what, what are the laws that have been created against graffiti? So now they say that you can go, you can sit in jail. But of course, it never happens, you know, they... They had a big vandal squad in Milan some years ago. And uh, all the people get arrested. They had to pay a lot and they have to do social, uh, social service. But uh, nobody sits in jail for this. And, and but of get, course, there, there, there is one point. While if you do like three, four, five times, you will sit. But till... Till now, till today, I know nobody that sits in jail for graph. And, and, and do, do you know of anybody who's had like hard penalties? Anybody that they've made an example of? Yeah, I have uh, some friends that get busted many times and they, yeah, they had to pay. But uh, yeah, you know, it's not like... Uh, so, some, you know, and then you have the judgment and then you, you know, you have the court. And uh, in Italy, they have to prove that you, that you have done them, that you have done the damage. Otherwise, they could not uh, just do like that. Okay, you, you have done and you have to pay. Or like in the US that they say, ah, you want to do the train, you know? No, in Italy, they have to... You have to paint first and they have to see that you have painted. So it's quite hard. Mm -hmm. But of course, now they are coming in, this, in, the, in the houses, you know, they ride houses and, and yeah, it's more and more common, you know? Yeah. And, and I want to go back in time a little bit and talk about your crew, The. Um, give me an idea of, of, of what what the structure was for crews out there? Was it all local Roman artists? Uh, what, what was the... Well, normally, yeah, normally Roman people, they don't used to move a lot, you know? So, yeah, the, the crew, they are uh, mostly from Rome. My crew, one of my crew um, starts in Rome. And, uh, but then, as I told you before, I was traveling a lot. And uh, so just uh, I met uh, some Bologna guys that became my brother. I, be I, I met Tech from Copenhagen, <laughs> you know, and then in Copenhagen now there are many people um, from my crew and uh, in Rome as well, in Bologna some, and uh, some there in Berlin, you know, now it's like uh, European, even because now it's, you know, just... You take a fly, one hour you are in Berlin and you can meet your friends. You know, yeah. it's not like before that to go in Berlin, you had two days of, uh, of train. So now I'm, I'm looking at these trains, uh, full top to bottom <laughs> trains. And, um, and again, this is something I've seen throughout Europe. And in, in a way, what's really interesting for me is that this really looks like it could be you know, New York in 1980. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and although this is an old picture, I'm sure there's like you mentioned, there's a lot of trains being painted. Um, the older writers who, who were who came before you, uh, that were painting trains, did, did any of them stay active or are still active? Or do they just hang up the, the spray cans and live a normal life? Uh, mostly they paint walls from time to time. There are some that still active, a few that uh, still painted and bombed sometimes, you know, and uh, yeah, they, 
they paint maybe a train, maybe, you know, they just go on a tram and they do tour, tour ups. You know, it's, it's depend, but yeah, some day they still active. But of course, mostly they, they chill, they hide for the moment. But you know, I've seen that uh, in many cities and many countries where they start to paint a little bit earlier than in Italy, there is a big comeback from the old school generations, you know? So what I would like, it's just uh, to see one day maybe some of my old school heroes just to ever coming back, who knows? So can we say that graffiti is, a, is gonna be a lifelong passion for you? Yes, of course. You know, you know that I'm also, I really love nature, I really love to go fishing, but yeah, graph, it's like something that's still, you know, in, in, you know, I get inside, you know, when I, when, I, when I walk around in the countryside and I see a abandoned place, I want to paint it, of course. So, and I will not leave this thing, you know. Right. And, and when I, I see the train, I look, you know, because I, I'm interested, you know. Like, I think a few months ago, I was going to fishing, you know, and then train passed just in front of my car, and there were some graph, and I made the video, you know, because I really like, I mean. And, and so what's your, what's your, what's your um, I, I guess because you're an elder statesman, your relationship with the younger writers. Yeah. What, what, what kind of advice do you give the younger writers? You know, I don't uh, really feel comfortable to give any advice, you know. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just say them to, to take care because, of course, you know, the, the kids now, they think, yeah, that's easy, you know, that's easy, that's everything, it's easy. But uh, it's, it can turn really fast, you know, and I mean... Of course, when you think about uh, cops and about, you know, uh, about trains that can kill you, of course, I mean, you should take care. Every, every time you, you think about graph, you, you have to, to be careful, you know. Because I mean, but uh, la uh, some years ago, uh, they called me from a newspaper, a national newspaper, because ne near to Milan, one one young guy died under a train. He was painting, and uh, another train passed and killed him. And they say, yeah, but I mean, for me, I would like to die in that way, that not with a cancer like my father died when he was thirty-seven. You know, of course, I prefer just to die doing my passion. Than, than not uh, suffering for nothing. Wow, a very, very powerful statement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For yeah. that. And, and so as you're looking at all these young guys coming up and, and, and how graffiti has evolved over the years and you know now that it's being accepted in the art world and the commercial space and uh, now we have the museum here in Miami. Um, yeah. If you were to think about this kind of story, the story that you're a part of in your country, in the world as well, um, if, you have, if you can reflect a little bit as to where we are today with the culture, um, what stands out for you? Well, uh, I, I don't know where we are going. I think we are uh, really, we are not respecting so much the, the, the earth where we live. So sometimes I feel really like uh, more like what, what the fuck are we doing, you know, in this world. But uh, then, you know, I mean, because culture, yeah, of course, we, we are in an evolution. But is it the right way to evolve? I don't know. But uh, I think that everybody has to find his own way, you know, even for graph, for example, people, you know, they change the style. Now there is an involution of style all around the world. 
and I mean, okay, everybody, if you like to do, do your thing, you know, you do what you want. But uh, I think it would be interesting in having something, I don't know, I, I cannot really explain to you, you know, but it must be something more, uh, we, we have to evolve in a good way even on graph, you know? Yes, to do that, things, that's, things, that, that's things what, that are purpose. Per, you, purpose. Know, you, know, we, you know, I come from Rome. I mean, Rome, the culture, the Roman culture, it's, you know, it's like something that come from 2000 and more years ago, you know? And, and it would be nice just to get uh, something, I don't know, but just to don't be part of uh, just uh, to have the games, you know. The people now they are on the on internet and they play. I mean, the sons of my of my friends they are in front of the phone. They play all day, like on video games. And I think it would be better just they go in. They run in a yard. I mean, probably I'm wrong, but. Uh, but I think that's the real life, you know? What we get, it's what we had, it's, it was a real life instead of, uh, of this. Then, look, now we are speaking, you are in the US, I am in Rome, you know? And we can have a connection and other people can, can, can check the, discuss the discussion we have. But, so we can use the things we get in a good way. Yeah, but uh, we have not to abuse, right? And one of the things that's, that's the same. Sorry, let me say the last thing. That's the thing I used to say when I've seen people painting next to me, you know, and they were bombing, bam, 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 so much, you know, for two, three years, so much, and then boom, they explode because, of course, you know, they had no more interest on what they were doing. So I, I always was telling them, guys, chill, you know, paint with the fun, but not with, with the, you know, don't be like a riot or it's not, you are not in competition with, uh, with no one else, you know? Right. Um, one of the things I wanted to backtrack on because of, of what you were saying of, of, of purpose, you know, like, because you're a naturalist um, and... And it brought to mind uh, somebody in Hawaii, Estria, who turned his graffiti talents to natural, natural issues of natural uh, um, concern, like water, like water rights, um, and you fish. Um, and one of the things they did with their graffiti, they were doing all these you know, uh, murals uh, to promote, um, uh, our, uh, promote awareness around ecology, right? Yeah, um, and that's that's one of the things that I I find really interesting about this culture is that it has ability to have uh, a political voice. Um, of course. Do, do you see that happening in 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 Rome? Well, just yesterday, from a little, uh, you know, we have Molise. It's little region uh, in the south of uh, Lazio. That it's the Roman region. Some I was I get an interview for fly fishing. And they asked me just to go there and paint a mural just to, you know, to, to get uh, people more conscious about the respect of the water where the fish are living. So, yeah, it, it's happening more and more and more. Yeah, how perfect two of your passions um, meet like that. Is that something that you think you have a, a role in, in terms of uh, being uh, an activist well, and, and advocate for uh, graffiti? Well, uh, you know, I, there are many writers that are fishermen also, you know, and I was speaking, for example, with the Yes2, that maybe you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just we get, yeah, that's the adrenaline, you know. So imagine just the calm of the yard, you know, and, uh, and, you know, just, you have to, to be quiet and, 
and the same it's for fishing you know you have to be quiet there is just you have to hear every every noise and to understand what what can happen and where it can happen and that's totally the same but one it's in the middle of the nature and one it's in the middle of the, the of the city on the track side yes so i'm looking at a picture here from 1996 and it's a cento piece yes sir uh, did, did you get to meet him when he was in in, in italy not at that time uh, i painted with him after he came back another time and yeah we had the opportunity to paint together and and but, so that that dynamic of meeting a a true new york painter uh what was that like for you what was that exchange like well i can tell you that when i is when we painted together i was looking at him you know I did my piece, but mostly I was looking at him. The same when Part came in Rome, or when uh, Riz mm, from AOK came to Rome, you know. With all those people, I just take my time, you know, because, I mean, mm, it's a pleasure, you know, for us just to to see some some kings, let's say, Maybe for you know, for some they are not, but for me they are. And uh, if I paint today, but also some Roman, eh? some oldest old schooler from Rome, sometimes I take my time, you know, and I look at them painting because it's really nice just to enjoy, you know, you have not just to be in competition always. By the way, did you have a chance to paint in New York at all? Uh, yes. Uh, well, not to implicate you on anything, we don't know, but uh, well, that's good. So you came to Mecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came a few times, and uh, first time I can say it was just for one week, and I can say I haven't liked at all because it was too stressful, and they have this, uh, you know, the, I don't know how you say, it, but the different timing between uh, Rome and New York. So I was really fucked up the first three days and after four days we, we left. Second time I stand a few weeks and it was uh, nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it, you know. I took my time, I met some people and it was nice. And, and so in, in terms of, I, I always, let me just frame it this way. When I meet other writers from around the world, I'm always very fascinated that this culture uh, pulled us together from very far places. Yes. Um, it, is, it is a phenomenon, isn't it? That we all of a sudden have this extended family in the world around that's, one idea of getting... That's totally mind. true. You know? That's what happened, you know, I told you that I was traveling around the world for two years and uh, what's happened actually it's that uh, just... I went to Kiev and the people just say, okay, you can sleep at my place. I went to Nepal and people just bring me at their, you know, at their home. And uh, they share the food that it was not a lot. And they share with me, you know, and they, they show me things. And, you know, I mean, but even in Australia, I mean, it's just to say the difference between the poor places till the richest places. I had the opportunity to, you know, to, to, to be in contact with people from all around the world, you know, and that's so nice. For example, now in a few days, some guys that I met, a uh, couple that I met, they will come to my place. And, uh, you know, it's just like that. Or Brazilian came last year. I met one night trying to paint something. You know, and they say, yeah, in three months I come to Italy. I say, man, I come, I go back in two months, so you you can come. He stand one month at my place. You know, we are really good friends, and that's it. You know, it's nice. That's the way it should be. You know, I mean, it's a big, huge community, and it's super nice when you when you met the good people. You know, you get the feeling. It's super, super nice. Yes, I, I, I would agree. Um, you know, we're looking at some pictures of these top to bottoms, uh, uh, the top to bottoms, and mm -hmm. it, brings, it, it brings to mind the collective effort of One Up, right? Where the crew just puts up the crew, um, yeah. um, you know, 
for it's not it's not individual so to speak that it's yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's happened. Uh, yeah, one up. Probably they are the ones that uh, they use it in the best way with the, the technologies. Yeah. But uh, you know, the first crew that used to do those were the Moas and the Old from Norway and Denmark, and then THE from Rome and uh, you know and Denmark as well, and then I mean. After that, in Italy, after THE, many, many other crews, they start to, to do, the, you know, to write crew names and not, uh, not just their own names. But, uh, of course, you get more power, you know, like 10, 15 um, guys writing the same name. It's more than you just writing your. Yeah. And so in terms of, of what's next for for you and and the the well let's talk about you right you you have the yeah. shop um and, yeah. and that's that, that's your primary focus right is is yeah. the business uh but you stay active in the in in the community yeah yeah i used to go to paint and i used to do some uh, some legal job i used to make canvas sometimes you know just uh yeah, I do. I do everything, you know. That, that, but most your, of the. Sorry? sorry, I was gonna ask. Does does your do you at the at the shop sponsor graffiti artists or graffiti events? No, because as I told you, we just get a little. Um, we want just a little money, so we prefer just to have a low price. But uh, that it's possible to every kids to to paint a piece. And so we don't really have uh, this power just to sponsor. But of course, you know, just like one per year, we ask to our brands to help us to, to make some jam. And we used to do graffiti jams. I mean, back in the days, we bring uh, blade, we bring scheme, part, and, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah. Many people, even not just from the U.S., but many people came to, to Rome and they had the opportunity to paint doing uh, uh, graffiti gems, you know? So I, let's talk about that, because I think that was always something very interesting to me, how in Europe, um, they were, from what I remember, even for myself, I was always invited by the efforts of young kids who wanted to see these New York, their New York heroes, so to speak. Uh, of course, and, and that it, it, do you not find that unusual that kids want to decide like uh, fly in a total stranger and support him and his art? Uh... No, I think it's normal to me. You know, just that. Uh, I mean, you guys, our our culture, you know, and uh, probably we are the culture from 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 the younger for for the younger. I mean, now I get invited in Milano and in Bologna just to paint to some graffiti jam. And look, I'm white hair, you know, I'm, I'm a fucking old man. And it's, that's normal. I mean, and, and it's even better just to know people from another, you know, from another country, you know, with different background. And uh, sometimes... You can like them, and sometimes you you know you are disappointed. It happens to me, eh? just to went in front of uh, of a train and to and to think what what the fuck I'm doing here with this guy, you know. People from New York, yeah, of course it happens, but uh, most of the people they are nice, and you know you enjoy and you want to see them again. And but that's it. Also for. For the for the younger, of course, man. Yeah. I mean, me when I was painting, you know, with blade or you know, it was like my hero or with part or, you know, I was thinking, wow, you know, just uh, yeah, it's uh, tight. But, 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 but even when I was painting with the Cantu from Germany, you know, I have not to go so far. I mean, it's just to have the opportunity to meet people, you know, that 
that uh, inspired you in some way. So that's it. Yeah, and that's a powerful statement because I think about Blade and Park and their place in our history uh, mm -hmm. and them having this opportunity uh, to share their art and their story uh, abroad, right? Because somebody else was inspired by them. Somebody else loved them and somebody um, wanted to introduce them to their country, to their community, uh, uh, and usually somebody younger. I think that's the fascinating thing about this culture, right? That it's continually turning over young people um, uh, that uh, pay homage to, to the older artists or to the culture. Sure. Um, again, that's not a lot of them, but there's a good, there's a good amount of, of young artists that have a lot of respect for the culture. And uh, that's the vantage from Europe, from what I've experienced, um, even especially when I do these talks with some of the European artists, uh, they have great respect for those that came before them. Yeah, but you know, as you told, it's a culture, you know, and that's obviously that the culture, you know, you cannot just uh, say, yeah, hey, okay, I start my thing and, you know, then of course the, the respect, they change, you know, the way of respecting, you know, some they don't pay respect, of course, but, uh, I think uh, the culture, a culture, it's a culture. And so you always want to, you know, to know who start the things and, you know, and uh, to get the opportunity, I mean, to, to meet people and, you know, and to know and to see, hey, let me check how we do the sketch, you know, or how we do his lines because it's, yeah, it's, that's huge thing and, you know, I mean, the people, I mean, the first uh, writers, now they are old. Some, they are dying, you know. And when they, they will be gone, I mean, it's over, you know. And for the people that still in the culture, they will be, they, they will never have the opportunity to meet them, you know. Imagine yeah. people, writer in 30 years, they will meet no no old schooler because yeah. uh, no, I mean, that's, that's the exact you know that's the feeling that's the energy that's that's the spirit that um drove alan cat to to create the museum right because i think he's been documenting and collecting these guys and aware of their age of and some of them have died unfortunately you know we lost phase we lost nick and others. Yeah. And especially during COVID, you know, this is a very scary mm. time. Yeah. And, and the, these talks matter, right? This, it matters that I talk to you uh, uh, so that because you've been doing the same thing, right? Documenting and talking to the, the pioneers and the artists of the culture, because um, if you don't, who will? Well, I try, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, you're right. Because I think, you know, by the way, many people... After the book came out, many people just told me, you, you are the only guy that could do something like that, you know? And not because uh, I am better than others, I think, but just because I think uh, in a certain point, you know, also with the shop, you know, I get all the connection, not all, but many connections, you know, and uh, even if some people, they are not my friends, you know, they understood that it was something important, you know, and that it was the time. But of course, I think that I will, it was impossible to me to do, to do it alone without Lorenzo, I mean, but uh, also I think that uh, not so many other people uh, could have done what, what we did, you know. Instead now, of me. Is, uh, let us know, is the book still available online? Yes, I mean, uh, on, uh, on romasubwayart.com you can buy. But I mean, now you can find uh, there are distributors all around the world. So I think you can find all around the world. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's let, let me say something. This book come out with uh, Voltrain Press that uh, it's a, a company 
made but, uh, by Domenico. Domenico, it's a guy from the south of Italy that came one day in my shop and he said, hey, I want to do a book about uh, poison. And they say, okay, just, you know, to me, it was like uh, scary. Maybe it's a cop, I don't know. And this guy in the next 10 years, you know, he have done a lot of books and he's bring the culture really up, the, our culture up. I mean, in Europe, Vulture Impress, it's well known. And I used to work with him, so I did the logo and everything. But uh, then when I was traveling, just uh, Lorenzo, my friend that is still working now for them, he told me that Domenico had a cancer. Mm. And so we were into doing the, the book by ourselves, you know. But then we talk, me and Lorenzo, and uh, we decide just to come out with the Vulture Press because uh, uh, it was the last gift that we we want to do to Domenico that unfortunately passed away a few weeks before the book came out. Mm. But uh, yeah, but so it's uh, also, I think that uh, reading this book, you can, you can feel the energies also of uh, Domenico and not only of from me and Lorenzo. Because this guy really have done uh, some thing crazy for the culture you get a great collection you know of uh, of canvas from good writer all around and uh, probably now when these uh, covid things they go more uh, more slowly and they go down we want to bring the collection around you know because i think that uh, it's nice to remember him in a, in a way Yes, that's a, that, that would be a beautiful homage. And uh, speaking of COVID, how, how did it affect you? How did it affect your friends out there and, and the movement? Um, I know Italy got hit really hard and it's still going through a lot of changes. Um, yeah. How, how did you cope? With, well, actually, uh, so when COVID started, I was in uh, Spain. So I did my COVID uh, lockdown in Spain. It was quite hard to me. Yeah. In Rome, it was hard because people could not really get out. So the shop was closed, but, uh, and you could not paint any walls because of course you get arrested. But uh, many people have paint trains mm -hmm. because the yard was totally abandoned. They were without security. And so it was pretty hard bombed city at the time on the on the train lines, and that's something that make me. I mean, it, that's fun, you know. Yeah. But of course, yeah, I think for you know, I was talking. I was talking today with a friend from Finland that I want to go to visit, and he say, "Man, I cannot get out of this shit, you know, because you you need a good, uh, you know." something serious to go out and to move. And I'm in lockdown since one year now, I'm going crazy. Yeah. And yeah, for, for the people that like to travel, also for graffiti, it's, it's fucked up, man. You know, I mean, here it's something strong. Eh? I mean, some country you cannot get in, you cannot get out. I had the chance just to move uh, in uh, last September, just to go some days in Ireland, that it was nice, but, you know, and now if you want to move, for example, I went back from France where I get my, my, my grandma now, and you have to do the PCR test, and now I'm locked down for five days inside my, my house, you know, it's do you guys so have strong. Access, do you have access to the vaccine? Uh, no. I, I, yeah. No, no. Now, now they are doing vaccine to people from 70 years old, I think. Mm. And, and then so I, it's going to be the 60 for this summer. I think probably the people 40, 50 years, it will be in uh, September or something like that. Yeah. So I imagine all of because you're a small business owner, I imagine this has been really difficult for you. Did the, the graffiti community uh, support? How did you get support from the graffiti community? 
Yeah. No, we didn't ask to <laughs> to the community, you know. Just I mean, we, me and Daniele, bit we are like uh, strong enough just to to be alive, and we fortunately, you know, we had no kids, so you know, because probably this would be art, you know, if you get right. a kid, if you have family, you know. But like that, uh, just when you have your own apartment, you know, you don't need a lot of money to 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 survive. So yeah. we prefer just we we both hide some money. So when it was the hard times, we get uh, just sure. okay. Now it's not time to spending money. Okay, just do the you know yeah with what we get. Yeah. Well, we, you know, it's interesting because in New York, we're seeing the resurgence of graffiti on the trains now. There's an mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, yeah. It's been really exciting. A lot of Europeans have come through over the years and continue to come through when they can. Um, yeah. Hit the trains. Which is, it's pretty exciting when you start seeing that running again. Because yeah, it's strange, huh? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty tight with the, the train security. So, um, yeah. It's really interesting. So listen, yeah. in, ra in wrapping this up, man, I, I really want to thank you for sharing this history with us and our, our friends here at the Museum of Graffiti. We thank you so much. Um, as somebody from the community, the fact that you did this book um, is, is really special. It, it's, it's really, and I'll have to look for it uh, because I, I, I did go to Rome many years ago in the 80s and um, I, I saw some graffiti there in Firenze. Um, and uh, had no idea it would blow up the way it has, right? And it has a history. Yeah. That's why I was curious uh, about its early days and what you got to witness. So I look forward to the book, and I'm going to encourage everyone to look up the book. Uh, go to uh, romasubwayart.com and purchase it um, and, and follow it on the Instagram as well. And so, Trota, I want to I wanna thank you and... and, and uh, uh, wish you good luck up uh, in, 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 in Roma with the, uh, the coronavirus stuff. And also, and also uh, 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 that you uh, have success uh, catching fish. Thank you very and much, Carlos. I'll say this. Fly fishing does not look as easy as people think. You need to be a patient person. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, that's a passion, you know. It's like for graffiti. You have to try and try and try and... Yeah maybe you can do something good. Thanks, Carlos. Grazie. Hope to see you soon. Yes, sir. Ciao. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Ciao. Bye.